felt like God spoke to me and said, Lake, you're going to have to do your own team. One of my favorite parts. We didn't go outside for nothing. Everything was built inside this place. I, I used to come in here every day, go into my office and walk around in here and get sick to my stomach. You know, it was, it was, whew, it was rough to look and see all the equipment just sitting here dusty and not being used or whatever. So all this, this tape, everything right here is how it came off the track. Yep. I heard him say to me, he said, I can't believe a dang tourist came over here and won the world championship. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of buried treasures in here. One of them we're gonna resurrect. That's we're gonna arm you guys with a little bit of background knowledge so you can better understand what he's talking about while he's talking about it and you're not wondering so much before lake speed ever got to nascar he was a go-kart wizard still is actually he actually beat ayrton senna at the 1978 world championship over in france in go-karts with a field full of guys that were going to formula one after that and he comes back you know just a dude from mississippi he goes to nascar the building we're about to go in is where lake operated his own race team from 1987 until 1993. We're out here with Lake Speed and Lake Speed Jr. at his former race shop. I don't, we don't really know what happens there now. That's what we're here to find out. We haven't been in there yet. And they're going to show us what it's like and we'll get the, the kid's perspective on the <laughs> progression of all of this too. All right, sure. When did you build this building? 1986. 86. Summer of 86. And how old were you when this happened? I've been 14 years old then. Champions like Lake Speed have relied on Wins quality products for over 47 years. To run up front in NASCAR Winston Cup competition, you need an edge. That's why I set up my own shop and build my own engine. And I use Wins quality automotive chemicals in the operation and maintenance of my precision Oldsmobile Delta 88. Wins products are available at Kmart, America's favorite store. So I'm the vice president of sales and marketing at Total Seal, but prior to that, I worked for Joe Gibbs Racing and before that, Melling Racing, which we were there at the same time briefly. Right. So yeah. I've grown up in this my whole life. We're gonna have some fun with some engine projects as part of this, so. There's a lot of buried treasures in here. One of them we're gonna resurrect. That, that's what we like to see is the, the buried treasures. Yeah. And the, where did you park the hauler? Right there. The hauler, big 18 wheeler park right over there, and you had you could take stuff out that either that end. This is a paint was a homemade paint booth right in in, in this end of the building. And the parking lot was paved back then too, and the guys actually would do pit stop practice out in the parking lot. We're wondering that too. Where was where did that happen at? Right here. <laughs> so you're you're doing pit stop practice in your this is all in your backyard. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The commute to work was really short back then. Well, I'll tell you one thing. At that particular time when we built this place, Junior Johnson was the guy. He was the deal. And when this all came about, I, I knew that Junior's shop was about this far from his house. <laughs> Maybe his house might have been a little closer. Not much. But I thought to myself, you know, we already have the land. Don't have to go buy any property. All you got to do is build a building. So <laughs> they work for Junior. Nice. Did the pit stop practice bother your horses? Nah, they didn't used to anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're just gonna deal with they it. Got used to it. <laughs> All they get fed, they're happy. <laughs> kind of a lot of history all around this display booth thing here is basically two careers you've got the karting career on the right most of it and the left hand side of the stock car stuff what is some of this stuff was that your jacket and the, the world championship jacket uh one of the years not the year i won but i went over to europe and ran that race six times as Ayrton Senna was rising through F1, did you like seeing that? Because every time you heard about him, you're like, I beat that guy before. You know, <laughs> after I got involved in stock cars, I never thought about anything else. Really? It was total focus. I couldn't, I had no idea what happened to any of those people. I did know when I was finished, the last year I ran with the cars, I knew that there was at least six guys that I raced against in Europe that within 18 to 24 months were driving Formula One cars. And I talked to one of them in particular, uh, it might've been the year I won the world championships or the year before. 
and uh, Elio DeAngelis. And I asked Elio, I said, what's it like driving a Formula One? And he looked at me real straight face and said, just a big go-kart. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so anyway, that was, that was kind of really that. That's cool. The, uh, this trophy is from the World Championships. Wow, that's they cool. Le Mans, France. And the other one is the Darlington trophy. Did they ship you that or was that a carry on? Hmm? Did they ship that back to you or was that a carry on? Carry on. Really? Yep. <laughs> Did you have to like put it on your lap the whole flight yep. home? <laughs> <laughs> now, tell them what the uh, headline of the newspaper article was in the paper. Then after, after you won the World Championship in France, what was the headline? Of it, I don't remember. Oh, uh, Haddock told me the story, and so his mom. Uh, it said, "Tourist wins championship." <laughs> 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 Tourist. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that was in the newspaper or not, but I do know oh that the head guy for a karting in Europe mm -hmm. was also the head guy for IAMI that makes the engines and all that stuff and everything. Now, I heard him say to me. He said, I can't believe a dang tourist came over here and won the world championship. <laughs> <laughs> but the odds of that happening were like slim and none. My, in my entire racing career, it's been a God thing. Because it's just, the statistics don't add up to the results. It's, it's amazing. That's cool. That one's in French. The plaque. Oh, that's neat. So I well, check it out too. Is it so? That's 1978, the World Karting Championship, and then there's a 2008 WKA National, National Championship. Championship as well. So you went from stock cars back to go karts. Yep. We'll show you that in a minute. There's a whole yeah, lot of go, -kart, go -kart stuff here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Was this your office whenever this was the race team? No, that secretary in here. This has been my office all along in here, and then. The, another office outside for the crew chief, you know, to take care of everything. Is this like the original desk? This is all original. So this is like time this, capsule right in here. This is exactly, uh, this, this is time capsule for all of it, except this cabinet. I had a renter that couldn't pay his bill, and uh, but he did woodworking, so I traded him out. I needed a nice trophy cabinet. So <laughs> that's a real expensive <laughs> cabinet, yeah. but it's a nice one. <laughs> you know? These are the near misses. Huh. Oh, close, but no cigar. That's funny. Broken parts. So this like you were going to win a race, but then oh. one of these broke. And that's what you... Yeah. Char Charlotte, the fastest car by far. The Coke World 600, 92, 93. Yeah, 93 it says. I was there. I remember that. It was... Something happened, you qualified second round fast or something like that. On the first green flag run, you go from 21st, whatever it was, all the way to third. I mean, running down Earnhardt and Gordon, just catching them. Come Gordon, in. Gordon went in there as Davy. Davy and Gordon. I mean, Davy and Earnhardt were leading that. Okay. And that stuff. Is that like a rib bone? Now, that's, that doesn't really belong in there. Oh. <laughs> but what Great that is, <laughs> can you believe that went through a tractor tire? No. Yes. You'll see tractor out there. Wow. But this son of a gun, I had a flat on the tractor. I took it to the tire shop up here, and the guy gave that to me when he got back. That's what went in the dang part of a deer antler. Wow. I went, how did that drive? And I mean, that's it. That's crazy. It was in there anyway. That's one thing to think yeah. about this, because that actually went through the tire, right? That went through a tire under caution. We came in, made a pit stop, and when I they put new tires on the car and went back out on the racetrack and that thing went through the right front tire wow, wow. right on the lap coming to the green flag and it was on the front row late in the race and uh that was ugly it's a crank snout oh yeah this is daytona 1988 yep oh, wow daytona 500. you were leading the race and that happened wow so you went to the Stavola shop, you talked about them, Davey, or Bobby went to the 500? Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't have if this hadn't broke. Wow. <laughs> that, that's crazy. That's so there cool. wouldn't have been the, oh, father-son finish, and no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs>
And what's that one? Darlington, 1983. Mm -hmm. You like Darlington? Well, we, yeah, we had Darlington a bunch. And twice that happened. Broke the bow with just a few laps to go. Leading, you know, leading or running second or something. Yeah, right there where you... Wow. Get yeah. Shape, anyway, that's just good. Those are the ones close, close but no cigar. That's <laughs> cool that you kept that stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, I'm sorry. when you have a bunch of near misses, but you miss a lot, you know, you, uh, it's kind of nice to be able to remember, well, you know, who was close. If if such and such hadn't happened. Is this what your um, hauler looked like? No. <laughs> <laughs> One of these souvenir people came up with that. I don't know what what they were thinking about, but uh, <laughs> that was. That's so cool. Yeah. I think a lot of people our age, if they're familiar with NASCAR in the 90s, they know you as the Cartoon Network guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, back, that's back to, like I said, the, how they did things in the old days. Now, all those cars now are all wraps. Oh, cool. Of course, those were all painted back then. I actually was at Melling, and we, we did the Cartoon Network stuff. We had to paint all of that. All, cool. the, all the characters and everything were painted? So they were individual decals. So you had to paint the car. So like ah. uh, the birthday car, like this helmet. All that color is all paint. But then each of those individual decals had to be put on there and then painted over it and sanded. It was uh, it so was a ton of work. So now they just put a wrap on, just wrap the whole thing and call it done. That's a podium from the World Championships. Look what's said behind me. What's behind you? Your, your, your future sponsor. Can you believe that? Now, is that the foreshadowing? I, I, I can't. I can't believe that. There's it's, a lot of weird stuff that's happened. <laughs> that was a it happens to career. us too. Weird that's stuff strange. like that happens to us too. Yeah. So I do believe that completely. Just <laughs> hand, hand of God stuff just yeah. is you know, yeah. undeniable. Yeah. How did that sponsor deal come about? A strange kind of deal. I, you know, I've worked with several different people, you know, sponsor hunters and uh, PR people and whatever. And uh, one, one guy that's real close friends with mine called me one day while we were building this thing, not knowing what we were going to do with it, uh, and said, uh, you looking for a sponsor by any chance? And I said, yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, Wins is not happy where they are and they're uh, looking for something else. Would you be interested in talking to him? I said, of course. And the deal went together. Huh. The whole story is, is uh, pretty amazing that I had gotten released from uh, the 75 car early in the season of 86 and didn't know what I was going to do was sitting out trying to make a flower bed in front of the little house out there and felt like God spoke to me and said, Lake, you're going to have to do your own team. And I kind of chuckled, said, well, I don't have any money to do that with, don't have any resources, no way how can that happen? He said, you just do what you can do today and let me take care of the rest of it. I had a bulldozer I'd bought. Because we start out with we start out with a with a Kaiser blade, mm -hmm. and then went to a chainsaw, then went to a bush hog, and then a bulldozer. <laughs> Use bulldozer showed up. We yeah, bulldozer really made showed up happen. and started making things happen. So I thought to myself, well, I've got land, I got a bulldozer. Only thing I can do is go start making a place to put a building. So I started clearing clearing stuff. The same day. Hmm? Probably. I don't remember exactly, but if it wasn't that day, it had been the next morning for sure. Wow. But I uh, started doing it and uh, didn't know what, what I was going to do. And then out of nowhere, I got a thing in the mail that came and a company that my dad had uh, invested in years and years before that I'd never gotten any money out of at all. Uh, the people that were in charge of it decided to liquidate that asset. And it was exactly what it took to build this building. Wow. Put all the equipment in. Just out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Wow. Didn't see it coming. And uh, 
people started driving up the driveway saying, I understand you're going to start a race team. You need any help? I told them, I said, don't know, don't have a sponsor or whatever, but we're going to build a building. And I told them the <laughs> same story, and they said, I'm in. Wow. And uh, we started going, and then, like I said, then the sponsor shows up. guy calls me and says, you need a sponsor, and I get a sponsor. And we started building cars. And, wow. Uh, everything, a lot of stuff's happened since then. <laughs> It's Noah's Ark. It I always thought this, this, like, this is Noah's Ark. I was thinking that when I was still like, this is <laughs> like your God Ark. Thing, you know, just, it is. It is. It is. Yeah. Was this the first first cup car? Yeah. Where, where was the crew chief's office in here? Uh, right down here. So you got you got engine room in here too? Oh, yeah. We so did everything. Engine here. room and crew chief's office. Yeah. Wow, this is cool. We, we didn't go outside for nothing. Everything was built inside this place. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives when we're a little tight on cash. Maybe you just bought a bunch of upgrades for your race car and then your daily driver breaks and you can't afford to fix it. That's where Dave can help. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 cash instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, fix your car, and catch up on bills. With the way the world is now, it seems like you need credit for everything. And if you don't have any credit, how are you supposed to build any credit? Here's out. Build credit just by paying the money back on time. There's no interest or credit check needed to do it either. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download Dave today at dave.com slash stapleton. That's dave.com slash stapleton. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Future you will thank you. You've got to have the coolest name in racing. Like you were destined to be like a great race car driver with an You know, like my that. dad was one of seven speed boys. Seven. They lived on a dirt farm in South Mississippi, and uh, I do have a brother that did a little motorcycle racing at one time. And he, when I, the stock car thing got going, he actually ran the stock car a little bit. We, he was the one that suggested it. <clears throat> he said, you know, when you're running these limited schedules, we got a, we got a high bank half mile asphalt uh, stock car track in Jackson. He said we ought to get us get one of those short track cars and <clears throat> let you get more seat time and learn more about the chassis and stuff running out there and he said when you're not running i'll drive it <laughs> so, so he ran it some and i drove some and that was uh that was part of the, the education for me to learn about the chassis stuff too was just working on the cars that's an asa style car like the same kind of that mark martin and okay. rusty all those guys yeah. ran back then yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool well, let's get back over here where where the business was. Let's run this way. <clears throat> Give you an idea how it all flows. How it works. And how how similar does coming in here look as it was when you were younger? Like, does this take you back coming in here? Like, y yeah, it, you know? it it does. You know, it, it was it was different. Obviously, there was surface plate back here. Where that big table is next to the tractor. There was no surface plate. We didn't have no surface plate. No, not that one. Oh, but yeah. the one for the chassis. Oh yeah, that was a big. Uh, underneath this beam was where the cars, the, the frames and everything were built. If you're doing front clip, rear clip, whatever's going on, uh, total chassis, whatever, there was a jig underneath that thing there, and that's where the car went. Huh. That big table over there is where they actually built the front, front clips and the rear clips put all the fabrication stuff and steel and everything was back here. So you basically did all the fab work from from this beam this side, this way. And that's why yeah. you have curtains hanging right there. Uh, so to keep the, so the dust down. Keep, most all the nasty stuff was back here. This is where... Yeah, cars, heavy fab was back here. Heavy fabrication stuff was done there. Then you move to the, between this beam and that beam, this was all the minor stuff that happened in this area here and then the, then there was another curtain that was pulled from that beam over and then the finish the finish work was done over there and then out the door yeah there wasn't a setup plate there were 
four painted them. spots yeah. on the floor that yeah. the level spot <laughs> and you set it up with strings and levels yeah. <laughs> over on there yeah. he just made sure was this one of those squares here no 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 they were over there by the front door oh yeah. uh, what are these things uh this was on the car see it, see it easier this was one of my favorite cars this car was run as an intermediate car and came close to winning a bunch of races. Then when after after I'm out of stock cars and been out of stock cars for several years, uh, a friend of mine introduced me to vintage stock car racing. Uh, and I went and drove one of his cars at a vintage stock car event. And I said, wow, man. It was like five years, five or six years, maybe after I uh, had been out of, out of car, out of the stock car thing. And I said, dang, Ron, I got a couple old cars back there at the shop. I'm going home and fixing, building me a road race car out of one of these things so I can come <laughs> play with you guys. And uh, so that's, I came back here and turned this thing into a road race car and uh, road raced it with the, uh, with the vintage guys for about two years, I think it was. Then wow. they started getting cr crazy and putting current motors in the cars and having rebuilt every race. And I was like, sure, man, I was gonna do this for fun, huh? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they upped the ante really they, quick. They, they handed me right out of that right quick. I just I couldn't. So when did you- afford to play with that. You ran for your own team and then you went to Oh, Bud Moore you. and then the Melling, like how, yeah, let me tell you, let me what tell was you. the progression <laughs> there of everything that happened. So we we ran uh, the Wins 83 car for two years and then Wins uh, said, you know, we can't afford to do this. Uh, and, and especially you're winning races now and at this level, we you know, we just, we can't give you the kind of support you you deserve. We thought at that time, you know, if you win races and you're running up front, you know, the sponsorship's gonna come to you. Wrong. Hmm. <laughs> that was really wrong. The year between uh, 88 and 89, uh, we were running on fumes. Got a deal with the bullseye barbecue sauce thing. It came along with not very much money, but you know, it was all we could do. So we ran ran that se season and had the most awful misfortune. Worst luck ever. Worst season I ever had. I mean, I got in a wreck at Pocono and broke my shoulder. And so then I was out of, out of the car for, which is crazy, only about six races, I think, or something yeah. like six or seven races. And uh, during that series, we put other drivers in the car and every, they wrecked almost every race. Just about destroyed the car almost every race. And long story short, at the end of that season, we were pretty much done. You know, that was, uh, we had let the guys go and we didn't have any, didn't come up with any sponsorship. I think we ran 91, no, it said 90. I think I ran four races. We had like two guys working here. And uh, we went Daytona and a couple other races. It was. Is that what these cars are left from? Uh, no, these this other whole deal. That was that was a different, even different style car. That was all that stuff back then was rear steer cars. Yeah. The uh, first front steer car that we got was in '79. Where did these ones come from? Uh, did you just these pick cars were all built. And we ran 90, only ran a few races in 90. Kale called me in 91 and asked me to come manage his team and drive the team down there. He said, I need help big time. So I went down there and did that in 91. And just left my stuff just sitting here, not doing anything with it. 92, I had somebody come to me with the Purex sponsorship but it was only just a little bit of money just to run a few races, a couple races. Well, then they said they were gonna step it up for the next season for 93. 93. And we hired some 
hired some more people and we'd hired a few for 92 and then uh, 93 we got a few more guys and got a really sharp group of guys young guys a bunch of them are, have gone on to be crew chiefs and whatever all name team people but anyway we built some really nice cars and uh, 93 we went to the racetrack and we were to be contended with every time we went and uh had had a good deal there purex thing they weren't willing to step it on up they actually they said they were going to then they didn't so we only got we ran the first 10 races in 93 with these cars uh -huh. and the last race was with that car over there it was brand new and had the one race on it at talladega and i was sitting on a pit lane down there getting ready to go out and qualify and robert gates walked up and sat down beside me and said this is right after david had been killed and i said uh, any chance I can get you to drive our car next week at Watkins Glen? And I said, yeah. No, it wasn't at Watkins Glen. Take that back. Or was it? Yeah, it was. It was fixing to be Watkins Glen. And uh, I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, this is our last race with our sponsorship, so we're, we're toast right now anyway, so I don't have anything else I'm going to do. So. He said, well, I'll get with you this week and uh, we'll work out the details then. And so he calls me back and uh, said, got to thinking about being a road course. Uh, I think we're going to get a, see if we can't get a road course ringer to put in the car uh, to run. And then if, if everything's still going, if, it's still, if everything's still up in the air about our car after that, uh, then we'll let you run at Michigan next time. I said, he said, but he said, this thing could, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. This opportunity could be one race. It could be no races. It could be the whole season. We don't know what it's going to be until it's done. I said, all right, fine, okay, whatever. I said, but Robert, uh, you do know that I'm a world champion road racer. It's all I've ever done in my life till I came to stock cars. He said, what? <laughs> I said, that's all I've ever done is road racing. He said, let me call you back. <laughs> <laughs> and he called back a little bit later and said, okay, we're going to give you a shot. These cars don't have engines right now? Uh, no. They're, there's two engines over there, you know. When I, like I said, one other week, I, I left out one when... when uh, <clears throat> I don't know what year it was now. I had an auction and sold everything that was in here. Cause I, I used to come in here every day, go into my office and walk around in here and get sick to my stomach. You know, it was, it was, whew, it was rough to look and see all the equipment just sitting here dusty and not being used or whatever. So I finally had an auction and uh, when I had the auction, uh, like a lot of auctions, you don't get much for what you got. And that's why the cars are still here. Cause I was, we had like five cars and only one of them had more than one race on it. Wow. It was, we, we were loaded for bear when these people didn't come through. And uh, they were, the cars weren't bringing hardly anything. And I, I got mad and I said, there ain't no way. I'd rather let them sit here and rust than I had just give them away for nothing, right? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> that was a mistake. So the funny thing is, so the one of the two dinos, the Superflow mm -hmm. dino is at uh, one of our customers shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And I've been there and I've seen it. Really? Oh yeah. Does it still have stuff on it from here? Or no, they've covered all stuff up, but it was like this, he's like, yeah, I, he, cause he had a guy buy it for him because he was in, in Canada. And he's like, I, I, I need a dyno. So he had a guy here buy it and they shipped it from here all the way to Edmond, Alberta. And he's been using it ever since. Wow. We had two dynos back here. Yeah. The engine shop. Oh, so that's the, the <coughs> one of the Nebraska yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, What's that, that chassis? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a chassis that I was driving when I had my career ending crash. Really? 
Yeah, it's Sonoma. Fastest car in practice. <clears throat> yeah, our practice laps would have brought, started as fourth in the, in the race. Not even, without even making a qualifying. Yeah, right? another cut down tire. <clears throat> it's a very wrong place. What year was that? 1998. 98, yeah. 98. That was the Cartoon Network car. <clears throat> this was a Cartoon Network car? Yeah. 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 From Melling. Yeah. Yep. Did they... Did... Trevor can tell you more about the history on this one than I can actually accurately. I just know that when I got... When I crashed it, they said we we're just scrapping it. You know, we can't... It's torn up too bad. And, uh, but they... I think from what I understand, they did fix it and ran it again the next year when I wasn't there. Yes, we did. So that car, after we crashed it, we <clears> ended <throat> up taking it back to um, Hopkins. Hopkins and because they were, they were so backed up on new cars, he's like, well, bring it to me. Let me see if we can fix it. If we can, we'll fix it. If not, we'll just put you on the list to get, get you a, a new one. But you know, so we, we hauled it down there and he called us back about a week later and said, I think we can fix it. Hmm. So we got it back and put it all back together. And uh, Jerry Nadu went up there the next year at Watkins Glen and it was raining. That was the first time they ever had the rain tires oh. and the windshield washer thing. Huh. And he, he raced in Europe and they race in the wet all the time. Yeah. I think he was like two seconds a lap faster than everybody. I mean, he was gone. <laughs> and they're like, there's no way they're going to do qualifying and all that stuff. It, it, long story short, we ended up qualifying top five, kind of like uh, Dad had a, with the same car. And then in the race, we had some bad pit strategy. Something happened, and we had to do an extra stop. But he still went from the very back and drove all the way to fifth. And we got, we finished the, finished the race and we had basically had to stay out on old tires because that, we just, we were so off on strategy, we couldn't come in and pit. Finished that race, there was a big old giant spot on the inside of the right front where the cords were showing. It was down to the cords mm -hmm. and there was a piece of one of those uh, fender things laying inside the uh, air, front air, air duct to the radiator <laughs> about this far from it. That wow. little catch screen in there got it. So, like, Jerry got all the opposite luck Dad had. <laughs> <laughs> all the bad luck that Dad got, Jerry got the thing around. Of course, he had that race, and then the next thing you know, the Hendrick guy's calling him. He's like, I'm going to Hendrick. And then that's where we lost Jerry. Huh. But that then, that was the end of the Taurus deal, and we had to cut the body off of it, and then we were going to go to Dodge in um, 2001. We were going to Dodge. And that's why we cut the body off of it. Um, the roofs were all the same back then. Um, but that one never got rebuilt as a road course car, as a Dodge. So you were running Melling and driving for Melling yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Well, I'd done my own thing here. And then when I went from here, I went to, where did I go next? To Roberts. No, yeah. went to, went to, uh, Oh, Kales. Kales. Yep. Kales and ran, managed it and drove it too. And then from there, back here to doing my own thing again, obviously doing everything. And then when uh, Mr. Mellon called me, um, did the same thing again. Hmm. You know, was, so you had a unique skill set as a uh, manager driver. Yeah, I had like, to be like uh, player coach. Jack of all trades. <laughs> had to, you know, and I had I had a lot of experience by fire, you know, for all of it. So that was the the paint booth over there that you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, it was the homemade paint booth there. Is that still like a paint booth in there? It you... could be. But right now it's just shim cram with my son-in-law's uh, junk and and workout stuff. He's a uh, fitness guru. So I will say this: the I think the last race car from that was built in this shop that would have been painted in here would have been in 93. Wow. Okay. But in 1999, when I was working for Melling, we were moving shops from the Venturini's old shop over there 
off of Pitt School Road to the where the I say the current shop is. But they built a new shop on Motorsports Drive in Concord. Huh. So while our paint booth was being torn down and moved in '99 from the Melling old shop or Venturini shop to the new shop, we actually came and painted race cars here. Me and a guy named Craig Smith painted cars here. Hmm. Actually, we were living in the little house at the time up there. So we'd come back here and paint cars. So we were still painting. We did the uh, Atlanta Braves car, the Cartoon Network car, and we did a whole bunch of stuff for a couple months. It took like two months to tear down the paint booth and move it. So we were here for like two months painting cars in 1999. Wow. That's cool. So it still functions, right? We still have paint in the paint cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> Some of those cartoon yeah, networks. Well, are still work. <laughs> huh. Oh yeah. So yeah, if Seth moved the stuff out here. You can paint a race car in here if you, if you wanted to. Yeah. You get some red on those flaps. We used to paint red cars in here. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's all kind of colors. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Over the years. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. so cool. See, this stuff is like, it's just here. It's still here. Exactly the way it was. You can picture it. I, th this this room, yeah, I can. This brings back memories from way back even in the early purple people eater days those cars were lacquer paint and the so much bondo that was like one of the first jobs it was rick brakefield was the paint body guy right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah rick had me, let me come back here and help because as a kid all i wanted to do was touch race cars yeah and so it's like okay they'll let you touch me touch stuff back here you can sit there and bondo and... is that uh wind purple up there yeah <laughs> looks like it yeah yeah, well, Rick had all these little things where he would hang up parts and stuff and do things. Uh, that was nails. Make it all work, yeah. Huh. Well, all the little roof, I mean, they didn't have roof rails back then, but all the little different parts that needed to be painted the same color of their car, you would make those little pieces and hang them on, yeah, you know, wire. wire and stuff, and that was what you did. And if you had the paint mixed up, might as well go ahead and do it all at once versus yeah. having to do it over and over again. What are those little nozzles everywhere oh that's fire, a fire suppression fire in case some <laughs> paint lights on fire yeah because yeah you're spraying spraying something that's flammable the whole time oh uh, that makes sense yeah yeah paint booths are a lot fancier now. Oh, yeah. oh yeah like, oh like, oh yeah there's your air in right there and there's your air out that's all you had back then now all these things got some all this guts underneath fancy on the floor and oh yeah out. yeah this is old school oh yeah <laughs> That's cool. It worked. Oh yeah, it totally worked. Did you have these saved up for your uh, vintage racing stuff in case you that was smushed the, something? That was the idea when I, I got them. They were, uh, I was trying to do some vintage stuff and I was, I was wanting to do an upgrade on it. It's like, I've got a complete body for Taurus that I can put on that chassis if I ever, huh. ever, ever get around to doing it. That would be a project. I see an old jack stand with a 83 on it. Oh yeah. So that that's the kind of cool stuff. I mean, it's just like, it's just a jack stand, but it's still got the, the forensic evidence is still on it. Oh yeah. Oh, it's all, all the old parts and pieces. Your rear gear housings. Old Jericho transmission. Wow. Paddles, you know, for feet. You look at these. That is a fuel cell holder. Huh. This is all the parts and pieces to build a race car. Old air ducts. Yeah. Rear end pump, or rear end cooler. Yeah, there's enough stuff to put a couple of cars together. What was this room uh, here? This was the gear room, the gear and transmission room. What they did, uh, still some gears back there, I think, on the left. Just some guys <laughs> working oh, yeah. here and building gears and transmissions. And yeah, you got a lot of transmissions in here. A bunch of little obsolete parts in there. And some headers up there. Oh, yeah. When did everybody switch from the, like the T10 style to the top loader style? Uh, the top loader deal was really mostly just, you know, when we were running them, I guess it was <laughs> for the road race stuff. You know, you didn't really run those all the time. Really? Yeah. Huh. And later they did, but uh, at first, initially it was just for road race stuff. Old school shock. 
Yeah. And that's really old school. That's cool. I had a pair of them babies on when I won Darlington, I believe. Is that an I'm air valve? I'm pretty sure it was like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pressure valve where you could adjust the pressure. Huh. That, that's a phrase team, employment peak. How many people came to work here every day? Uh, we, including the secretary, I think the most we ever had was 16. So every day you had 16 people pulling up your driveway and parking their cars and going to work and you're, you know, you'll just sit in there. Well, no, Watch 15, because I just walked across the driveway. Oh, okay, so you're <laughs> counting yourself. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, 16, oh, yeah. including oh, yeah. the owner-driver. Believe me, I was working. I was... You think I, about that, so, you know, state-of-the-art, yeah. 10,500 square feet, biggest shop you could be, or in, in 80, 87, 88, with 16 people, including the driver, with... Well, we're at roughly a million dollars, less than a million dollars in budget. Yeah, under a million dollars. We never, never had any money really. Wow. Winning races, and then you fast forward to my time at Gibbs. I'm there in oh four oh five when we started. When I started there, and they go to the third team. So you've got five hundred people <laughs> with three cars. <laughs> do that math in terms of overhead right and then each, each of those primary sponsors is kicking in like 20 million so i think about a hundred million dollar total budget wow yeah things have changed quite yeah a dramatically i think this was cooler well, this was this what? was hands-on there's no doubt about it I mean, like I, I i helped everybody do whatever they were doing whatever needed help doing i could do whatever if it welding or whatever i mean oh was this the setup spot here yep yeah so we have blue squares like that on our floor and that that's probably what they yes sir that's probably what they were for <laughs> yeah, before, yeah so now i know if we ever need to do something like that that's the level spot that's on our the floor level place at your place no yeah. that's the most level place right. not necessarily the level place the most yeah. level place I took pictures of those. oh that's cool oh well, you got one of those winston briefcases oh yeah i can they, they were good about giving out gifts. Man. Is it still have the sunglasses? <laughs> in the... there, it was always something cool. Is yeah. it still have the binoculars and all that stuff in it? Uh, no. I've used it for a while as a bruise case, but uh, I don't know what the binocular things were too. Uh, the vet, the, the one I do use the most is they gave you some stainless steel knives. I mean, like, like regular dinner knives. And we use those suckers every day to day still. They're the best miles. Oh, wow. It's like the whole other half of this. This is the cool spot right here. This is the the modern dimes. I guess I, I totally forgot about all the go-kart stuff you're doing now when we were walking through there. So enthralled with the, the story. Yeah. Well, let, let me uh, close first thing first. This was the dirty room. This huh. is where all the grinding went on. In the engine like, cylinder head stuff this was all set up to do that i still grind stuff on it yeah pre-cnc machines that's how people did cylinder heads i like the the guy at pma who's just the guy in the corners back there forever yes that yeah that's that same guy would have been working right here doing it by hand that's how it was yeah. wow i could never dale paul spent a lot of time right there <laughs> That's the actual world championship go-kart right there. This is the card I won the world championships with right there. That is it. That's it. Only race that ever ran. So you you did that and then you brought it home and you're just like... Been sitting on the stand ever since. So all this this tape, everything right here is how it came off the track. Yep. yep. So this is, the, this is the back of the cart that Aaron Senna had to stare at the whole time you were beating him. <laughs> yep. That's insane. Same tires? Yep. Well, no, no, no. The tires run it off of it. And so these are same same size tire, same company, everything, not the actual same tire. Wow. Same black marks on the rubber panels and the same, you know, all the, all this yellow stuff was inspection things, you know, for... They were tech, so you you know whatever they had checked to make sure you didn't win something that 
uh, ringer in on them. All this was part of the tech inspection. Uh, huh. Paint, they paint stuff on it after different races. That's so cool. Yeah. Didn't know you still had that. Yeah. Was there any significance behind 68? The number they assigned you. Oh, but you didn't get to pick it? No, you don't pick it. No. You got a hundred, hundred drivers, you don't get to pick much anything. I'll tell you where you're going and what you're going to do. Huh. So these are the two dyno cells. So if, if you imagine, the, like the line hone was right here, the cylinder hone was right there. Of course, the trolley could move it back and forth. Then you had all the lathes, the bridge ports, and all the other uh, things to build engines. So these are all assembly rooms. And then these are the two dyno cells. This one dyno cell has been converted into a go kart engine dyno cell. Huh. You ever have any catastrophic explosions in here? <laughs> thankfully, thankfully not. Right. It was like the original chairs and everything. This is so cool. Uh, it probably is. Oh, yeah. But at least we have updated. So the, the little one over there is like a break-in stand where you can just uh, use the hydraulic system to control the load on it and run it. But they still you have all the, the throttles here so we can actually run that dyno. Hmm. So you can run modern stuff, vintage stuff, a little bit of everything. So this is also one of my play places. Who huh. so your current uh, profession was was like originated back here. I mean, I, be I, in the, I was always interested in engine stuff, right? So that was always when we had an engine shop here. This is where I wanted to be. Huh. This is always cool, you know. And so growing up, then getting a chance to go over to Gibbs and be part of their engine program there and do the oil development and do the whole Joe Gibbs oil program. That's where they got me where got deep in the engine stuff. And then as we progressed and started doing things outside of just NASCAR, we started doing go-kart engine oils and things like that. And we literally, yeah, we took go-karts and went and developed products huh. based on what we were able to do there. And we had a dyno at Gibbs that we were able to use. We did a lot of the testing there and then uh, when all that changed and there was a sale and all that stuff, then I brought some stuff over here and that's what this stuff's here for. Huh. Well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. the beam, everything heavy like engine blocks. Anything that was going to be done to an engine block happened underneath this right here. The equipment to do it would have been right here underneath mills and lays and bouncers over there this 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 little room was crammed with engine equipment wow i, I talked to some of my guys that used to, you know they're still in the business today they said this was the most efficient shop they ever worked in because they didn't have to walk so much hmm. everything was really close just a few weeks ago he was racing this one and this is the coolest baddest beast on the planet two engines yeah and you had disc brakes on the front too. Yeah, about 45 horsepower a piece. Wow. Yeah. Twin 135cc two strokes on methanol. <laughs> so you got a, a total of 90 horsepower and this thing weighs a couple hundred pounds. It didn't weigh a couple hundred, it's probably about 150 or something like that. Wow. Yeah, maybe 300 pounds with him sitting in it. <laughs> that's, that's quite the power to weight ratio. Yeah. And you still race? Yeah, Is I just ran it two weeks ago. Wow. And, uh, and, uh, Newcastle, Indiana, there's the biggest car track in the country is up there. What, 93 something miles an hour? 92.8. 92.8. Wow. In uh, a <laughs> distance of 125 yards. Wow. Maybe from going really slow, a really 180 degree turn, entering on the straightaway, and 180 degree at the other end. Top speed, 192.8. So this thing got some serious thrust. Oh, oh yeah. These are it's so, it accelerates so fast. You got a micron, it's got a bunch of 
it got all kind of information on it. I mean, it gives you every kind of information. You don't have time to look at that sign gun because you better be watching where you're going. <laughs> After you get through running, that's when you look for that. You see what it was. You don't, yeah. you don't look at it while it's happening. Is there much contact, if any at all? Uh, open wheel, you don't do contact, doesn't do well. Well, that's no. good. <laughs> try not to. Try not to. I mean, once in, a while, once in a while, you'll see, you know, you'll see a little scuff mark or something on one of them. You get a little close in a tight place, but uh, that's these open wheel cars will get up in the air in a hurry if you start trying to be too aggressive. I imagine going 90, yeah. things get pretty haywire pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah, that's what scares me. I was like, oh my gosh, someone hitting you like that. That's awful. Yeah. There's, there's no roll cage and there's no, you know, nothing. Fooling around after the stock car thing here for a few years and those Steve Peterson, uh, NASCAR official guy. Steve had done a lot of karting back when he was a teenager and whatever too. And he started calling me and said, look, you know, we're going out here on Wednesday afternoons at Charlotte Motor Speedway. They got a kart track out there and running carts. I said, why don't you come on out and run? He said, I got two or three of them. I'll let you drive one of mine. And he kept after me, kept after me. And I finally went out there one day and rode one of his. And I went, dad, God, I forgot how much fun these things were. <laughs> Steve, I got to get my own. <laughs> After I wore out his for about three weeks, <laughs> running his, I, said, I got to get my own car. You know. So then they multiply. So, so they multiply, <laughs> yeah. So now I've got quite a few of them. So. That's cool. Oh, well, this is something we get to do together. This is fun. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you guys too? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Huh. Yeah. There was my old uh, for my cart shop. We had a mail order cart shop. We sold cart stuff worldwide. Huh. Imported and exported stuff, and uh, I was the main advertising for it. So I got to go travel all over. I've raced in Hong Kong. I've raced in Europe, all over Europe. Uh, New Zealand, New Zealand, Mexico, just a whole bunch of places. There's the, another. So this is this is cool. Down so down. This, yeah, so this is that was what, my, that was a pit cart, dude. Right. That's it. Really? That yeah. This is, is what it was. Pit cart. Yep. That's the only pit cart I ever had. So your whole race team, this was the that was, pit cart. Mm -hmm. That's what went to the racetrack. Yep. And now they have these big monster things that people sit on and all that. I mean, it looks like it has a jacuzzi in it and a lounge and everything. Yeah. Yeah. This is what it was. Huh. We still use it. This is what we get to go to the racetrack with for the go-kart stuff. Yeah, I roll it out and put it on the trailer. Oh, that's cool. Go in there, so we still work out of it. Get the old Unical barrels and stuff, <laughs> turn them into trash cans when they were done, and super old school decals. Recam doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> that's what's left of an old school cop cams decal. It's such a better barrel size than the giant was. Oh, yeah. AC spark plugs. That's cool. Yeah. That's a roof decal there, right? Oh, that's an old one got a, a Purex car out here. If y'all want to do something, put put the motor in something, it bolts right in there without any issues whatsoever. Huh. You think you could uh you think you could still drive a stock car? Huh? Oh you ever driven a stock car like recently? Uh what's recent? I don't know, since your second life as a go-kart guy uh, began. Like since you stopped road racing. Let me see. When the last time I had it? Would have been uh, 2000, probably 2004, huh. three or four. The last time it was on, a, we ran that. In my guess, yeah. I'd say based on how fast he is in a go kart, it'd be no problem at all. <laughs> so he's saying we can get that engine freshened up, put it back in that car, yeah, and get you back in the car. Yeah, I think everybody would love to see that. Uh -huh. That'd be that'd really be cool. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> what is that thing's road race ready. That, that's that's the easy part too, right? It's easy to go to a road course track. Yeah, yeah be it VII or Kershaw, that's a place you can just go to. Huh. I go do just put the motorboat in. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot of defining factors about the Ford architecture. If it's like a C3 or D3, or... I don't know all that either. This is, you know, it was the current whatever it was when when we were running them. That was the current motor. But, uh, Dennis will know. 
We had dancing motor. Yeah. Yeah. This was like a nine to one uh, Bush motor, wasn't it? Originally, that Bob had. Yeah, originally, it was. Yeah, it was a Bush motor originally. I think, from my understanding. But then also, I got. Some, I remember I got some. I got some heads from John Callis. How much power is it supposed to make? Uh, last time, my understanding was seven hundred and fifty. So that'll be. No, seven thirty something. Seven thirty something. We'll see if it does that again. Yeah, that'd be cool to see that. Dennis can put it in the dyno. We can kind of see where, where it's at. We can do some checks on it. And this got a little bit of race time on it, right? Four or five races, you said? Yeah, I don't remember how much time. I know it's been run a few times. Yeah, but we'll, we'll go through it. That's going to be that's gonna be the fun part is keeping the same heads, manifold, carburetor, block, but this just changing the hone and the pistons and the rings and the bearings and all that clearances. And that'd be fun because I think you've... Did you race on 1030 or 2050 with this thing? I, for, I forget what you what you ran with this with this one. Mm, I think it was 2050. Yeah, and we're gonna go lighter than that this time around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't we'll, think we'll that, get modern. I don't think we had that technology at that time. Yeah. So this is classic engine. It's gonna get refreshed with uh, modern knowledge. Yeah, that, that's what's kind of cool. This is really a time capsule, even though this was raced, you know, 2005, six somewhere in there. But that technology that time is going to be early 2000s you know nascar technology but not highest cup level yeah maybe more representative of probably what was late 90s technology now we'll get to fast forward 20 plus years and see what we can do with the same structural components just by optimizing all the other parts of it which is that's where a lot of it came from I mean, obviously yeah. better cylinder heads and things would make a big difference but a lot of the power gains came from just optimizing the friction and everything else in it. So it's kind of to illustrate the difference between somebody who can put an engine together and like a really, really knowledgeable engine builder. Like, hey, to me, this is gonna be the, this is gonna be one of the coolest parts of this thing is letting Venice and those guys over there get into it. Um, I got a bunch of good buddies over at Rottler, and so we can probably try to get them to hook us up with the right home and we can equipment, and so we can really give this thing the best we can, right? Again, keeping the same heads, manifolds, carbs, blocks, but optimizing what we have there and seeing how much we can actually gain without changing the big pieces of it. Yeah, set it down right there. I'd say go about six no, inches No, you gotta more. go back some more. You don't get the gate shut, don't you? Yeah. There you go. That should be good. Is that the cherry picker you take to the track and stuff? What? Is that the cherry picker that would go to the track? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything here is original equipment. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed already, you definitely need to. Because you just watched an hour of this. And if you like that, you like everything else we're doing. I'm pretty confident. If you don't, well, I'd be so I'd be surprised. But really think you will. We think you found your spot right here. And we're pumped to get this um this old ford engine over to over to pro motor engines and get it refreshed and see what's going on with that that'll be its own series of videos kind of like blending technology nerd out stuff with history stuff at the same time they got all kinds of cool old restrictor plate inserts and stuff over there too it's it's going to be really awesome oh, i'd also like to say that we just got a restock of the boom tube shirts on stapletonautoworks.com we sold out of the popular sizes pretty quickly and we just got more so if you want one go to stapletonautoworks.com and check it out this is it that's the one i'm wearing right now i was wearing it filming this video too we just got more we got them in every size from small up until 6x so and these hats too we got these all kinds of stuff if you like us you want to support us you want to have you know a piece of what we're doing that's how to do it. So we're glad you're here. We'll see you in the next one.